All right, I've taken a little hiatus from working on vehicles. I haven't actually had any problems, so I knew it couldn't last for too long. Of the uh, my 98 K1500, the uh, oil lines have begun uh, leaking. They've actually just rusted through. So I've got these Dorman aftermarket products. Uh, I'm a little upset because uh, I just noticed that only one came with the quick connect clip. Uh, so I'm going to try to retain and use the old one uh, or pick one up. First thing I'm going to do is hit the uh, connections over here on the radiator with some PB Blaster. Uh, so I can make sure that I can get those out. I'm going to get the bottom one here. All right, you can barely see the bottom one. That's going to be a bear to get to. Um, I'm going to crawl underneath here and see what we need to do to get that out. But I want to spray it down real good. The other thing I'm going to do, I mean, it's not really necessary, uh, but this truck needs an oil change anyways after a long winter of plowing. I'm going to actually drain all the oil out because obviously there's oil in these lines. And it's just going to make the job a little cleaner and I need to do an oil change anyway. So. All right, through the magic of video editing, I'm able to go back in time and share with you that I'm also replacing these quick uh, disconnect fittings. These, uh, even though these are a dormant product, they say transmission lines, but I believe they're the oil lines as well. Uh, there's actually an o-ring in there and I'm assuming that when I pulled my uh, old rotten lines it must have pulled an o-ring out or, or basically ruined the o-ring when I pulled it out. Uh, so I put it all back together, started the truck and one of these was leaking pretty significantly. So you might want to uh, give some thought into replacing these as well. They're only about, I think they were seven dollars a piece on eBay. So Alright, so I've got a catch pan underneath here. I'm using a uh, 15 millimeter socket. I'm just going to bust this loose and try to catch as much oil as I can. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull that out. Alright, so I have the uh, drain plug back in place and I've actually got my oil filter loosened up enough so that I can do it by hand. Alright, so while that's draining, because I'm going to be working right up near that oil filter, I want that to drain completely. Let's take a quick look at uh, where this actually rusted through, it's right up here by this plastic uh, bracket. We're gonna have to be, we have to remove that. Uh, and what I think I'm gonna do, so I can access the lower uh, line on the radiator, I think I'm gonna remove this plastic shroud here. So let me grab uh, the right size socket for that. All right, so those are 15 millimeter also, so that's good. Right there, right there, and right up here, right there. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove this top uh, radiator hose. Um, I'm going to lose a little bit of antifreeze, but not a whole lot because it is just the top one. I'm just going to get that up out of the way so I can get to that, uh, that top tube a little easier. And then we'll worry about the bottom one afterwards. And I'm just going to bend that up, pull it off, and bend it up out of the way. And you want to have your catch pan there, obviously. All right, so ideally you'd want to use a tubing wrench, which looks like this. It's offset, um, and it also has more grip to it compared to, a, say, an open-end wrench. Um, if I can't get this, what I'm going to do before I strip this out, I'm going to cut this off, and I'll just use a socket because I have no need to save this. One uh, reason I wouldn't want to cut it is because I don't really want metal shavings in that cooler. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a 20 millimeter open end uh, and I'm just going to tap it. And this again I sprayed with PB Blaster early on. I'm going to keep my hand against it because I don't want to strip this out. I'm just going to take the, just going to take a hammer like this. And try to apply pressure at the same time. And I don't know how I'm going to get the bottom one yet, but uh, We'll worry about that one a little bit here. I think it just went. Yeah, we may see a little bit of oil here. All right. So there's that. All right, so after further examination, I guess I've decided I'm just going to go ahead and try to put the wrench on it. And I can actually get a more of a straight on shot than I could the top one uh, from up above here without removing anything. And I've hit that with PB Blaster. I'm hoping it's going to be enough. I'm just going to apply steady pressure. If I feel like it's going to strip, I'm just going to stop. So I'm going to go slow. 
Oh, and it just went. Alright, so next we need to remove the uh, oil cooler lines from this end, and we're going to have to pull this, pl this plastic clip back to expose the uh, quick disconnect uh, clips. So it's got to, I'm going to try to do this uh, with the camera down here with me, at least for the first one, but then I'm probably going to get the camera out of the way just because it, it is in my way actually uh, to get this shot and you can see my screwdriver's handle is basically right there so I need to pull this uh, plastic clip back uh, a cover rather and then it's going to ex expose the uh, quick disconnect clip so uh, what I could do is when I get the uh, the thing off I could actually show you sort of out from under the vehicle but you can already see uh, that that's going to slip back and then that quick disconnect clip is going to be under there and that's the uh, the clip I mentioned early on uh, that both new lines should have come with but only one seems to have um, I didn't open the package yet okay so you can see that there's a, the, uh, a little spring clip right in here and I need to grab uh, another tool to try to get that out of there so let me grab another tool right. real quick so I don't know if you can see it or not I've got this uh, this like dentist tool is what I call it, but it's just a craftsman pick set. And I'm going to try to get that up underneath there, but I'm actually going to move the camera out of the way just so I can, uh, I can try to, I want to try to retain one of these clips without breaking it because I only have one with the new one. But you can see I just got one of the legs up on the other side there. And unfortunately this clip is going to pull upward rather than towards me. So, all right, so I've got the uh, lower one off and I've got the top one just about off. It was a little bit more difficult because it's obviously up in behind. All right, now uh, these would pull back if they weren't uh, clamped together right there. So that's my next task. And that incidentally is where the brake is on this line. I think I did show you that earlier. Uh, but those would pull right back out of there, uh, but they're clamped together. So now I need to address that clamp and try not to break it. So uh, let me take a look at that and we'll be back. Okay, so I did wiggle it around a little bit and you can see uh, note to self or note to you. Have your drain pan under the lines when you wiggle them free. Right, so. so I have the lines free. You can see both of them are kind of draining out a little bit. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually remove the lines from this shroud area so it's, it's still good that I removed that shroud even though it didn't allow me access to the lower uh, radiator fitting uh, but these as you recall are free up above and they're free down below so I'm just going to basically pull them out and we may lose a little bit more oil here try not to but okay they kind of route up by the uh, power steering assembly and there they are all right so what i'm going to do i still have a little more oil to clean up down here get that cleaned up we'll take a look at the new lines figure out which one's which and then we'll continue all on. right let's take a quick look here the oil soaked one here is the one that's uh was the lower line on the filter housing uh the one that i initially removed and the one that was actually leaking and it happens to be the shorter of the two lines also so this runs to the lower fitting on the radiator uh, and the upper one on the filter housing uh, runs to the upper uh, fitting on the radiator. So um, that's, how, that's how that goes. All right, so you can see one came with a new clip. If there's any doorman rips out there, uh, your quality control sucks. At least the O-rings are there on both, which is good. Uh, so let's go ahead and climb under the vehicle and see if we can get these things routed and installed. All right, so I have them routed generally where they belong. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get them threaded into the radiator. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm just going to uh, get that in there as far as I can by hand. And then I'm gonna take the 20 millimeter open end wrench and kind of inch it in. It's just the way we got it out. The other thing you wanna do is make sure uh, you don't lose your O-rings. I've pulled them off uh, the top one and I had it off the bottom one too. I did actually lose it once and I had to find that so so what I do is I do a, like about not even quite a quarter of a turn get it down there flip the wrench over do the same process so it's it's a slow tedious process if anyone else has a, a better way to get to this lower radiator uh, inlet let me know 
I always appreciate the tips and advice that people give me. I've learned a lot from all you guys. And if there's a better way to do this, I need to know about it. So. All right, same deal, except this one's going to be a lot easier. Got to put the O-ring on. I think it's smart to leave it off because uh, I did, as I said, I did drop one. I had to find it. I didn't want to use the old one, but that's always an option, I suppose. And I might want to top off my antifreeze a little bit. Of course, it's got Dex Cool. I did the water pump last fall, so it's been totally flushed and gone through. All right, so we're back at the oil filter housing, and these are the uh, quick disconnect fittings that we saw earlier, and that I'm now replacing. I'm just using a one-inch socket and a really uh, half-inch extension, but it's kind of short. I'm just using the extension to get my ratchet back away from this brace uh, alright so the good news is once you get that loosened up it's not very much threads and it actually comes out fairly easily so losing just a little bit more oil let me get that uh, to stop dripping then we'll get the upper one here alright just a quick update you can uh, if you've removed your filter you can actually get to it from this side pretty well for the upper one all right, so I was just looking at the uh, one that was leaking, and the O-ring is, in fact, gone. All right, on a positive note, the new uh, quick disconnect fittings come with a new clip. Uh, and I think I mentioned that uh, only one of the oil lines came with a new clip, and they do recommend that you use new clips, not the old ones. Um, this is a good opportunity for me to show you the grooves and how the clip sits in. I tried to show on the original footage when I installed the uh, lines <laughs> on the old fittings, and um, obviously we were under the vehicle, or I was under the vehicle, and it's kind of difficult to do. So let me show you real quick. Um, you've got grooves here. Uh, and basically each one of these ears, the top and the two sides, sits in one of the grooves. Um, so with this in place up under the vehicle, threaded in, you know, you're essentially going to need to find a groove like this to set the top in and then the two sides will pop in place so all right so we're just going to try to finger thread them in top one first don't cross thread it and if you mess up the teflon tape you want to rewrap it or put some thread goop on there and i'm sure you can't see anything but my fingers so all right just a quick update you can uh, if you've removed your filter you can actually get to it from this side pretty well for the upper one at least. Okay, so remember that the one that goes to the upper radiator fitting is the one that goes to the upper fitting on the uh, oil filter housing. I've got this uh, clip removed that attaches it to that metal bracket, but I do have a wire tie uh, on them as they originally had. So they're not quite as flexible as they probably could be. And I'm going to be cautious now that I know there's O-rings in there. That one feels like it went and seated. Now what I'm going to do before I put the second one on is I'm going to try to get that clip in place. And that's going to be tough for me to show on camera, at least for that upper one. Uh, and it's going to be tough for me to do with the camera there. This is the piece that slides over that clip once it's in place. So let me get that upper one and then I'll see if I can get the lower one on camera for you. All right. All right. You can see I have the upper one in. I have the clip in place, and I have that plastic uh, piece that basically prevents the clip from coming off. Uh, if I had to do it over again, folks, I would probably do that top line assembly with the clip before I thread in that lower fitting. So that's what this is all about. If you're watching this, I hope you watch the video all the way through, uh, and that's something that you could do probably to make your job a little bit easier. Okay. Let's go ahead and install that lower one. All right. So let's get the lower line in here. This is the one that was actually leaking, but I figured I'd change both fittings. Okay. Now we need to get the clip on. You can see I have a groove right towards me, so I'm going to try to get that middle ear right in that. So um, what I found was if you put the clip in the groove, make sure you don't get one of the side pins in the in the slot you're trying to get the center in and then push and you might need to help spread it initially but then it just kind of goes into place like that okay you don't want to bend it 
and you want to try to get that to sit flush in the grooves because you need to get this plastic clip over it okay all right you can see I have both lines on I've got the plastic uh, uh, clip protectors on I've got to install this little bracket which is right here on the floor and I'm gonna put a uh, I'm gonna put a uh, a zip tie on that that went up right through that hole up and through there I don't know if you can see it or not but you can see this is pretty much mashed out so I'm going to put a zip tie on there kind of holding that to the bracket I need to install my front shroud but I'm going to do that after I test for leaks in case I need to get at anything I need to top off my oil because I did have it filled up and obviously I pulled my filter and I lost you know some oil so if you're doing this job take your time you might want to consider replacing these fittings up front these quick disconnects um, if your filter housing gasket is leaking you could easily change that by pulling these two bolts so you might consider doing that as well at the same time so have fun uh, it's not a difficult job it's just a little time consuming a little bit messy uh, but you can do it stick with it leave questions and comments below and if you found this video helping helpful give me that thumbs up I'd like to see more of this type of thing hit that subscribe button thanks for watching and have fun